You have your card. You're, you're, you're holding the card. It's just off screen. Yeah, ho- hopefully you're right. <laughs> yeah, bet you better be right at this point, Dan. Now, you, now you're shaking in your boots. He's going to not play another tournament for the whole year because he thought he had his card. Yeah, don't worry about the sponsor's invite. Someone else can have it. And I'll miss out <laughs> by one shot. Thanks to Dan and Barstool. <laughs> Cheers, man. Four Blabs and my Barstool Sports. I got to tell you, boys, I'm coming off of back-to-back days. I've got 97% recovery on the Whoop Band. I've been sleeping like you. Oh, no. That's crazy. He was fine for the whole, the well, whole time we were talking. How is that, how is that possible? That we talked before the show for a half hour, and as soon as we hit record, my fucking internet freezes? What is that? What is that? And you, you're grainy. You you look like you're on a camera from 1985. <laughs> it was fine the whole fucking time. It was fine. You're, my back now. Yeah. We can hear you. Yeah. I'm just grainy. Potato. Yeah. Barry. That's can you get? Did bizarre. you hear what I was saying? Nope, no, nope. we didn't hear shit. I mean, we literally talked for like 35 minutes prior to turning the mics on. The second it hit recording, you were gone. I almost think if I talk too fast, it just cuts me out. But what I was saying is. I'm coming off back to back 97% recoveries on my whoop band. Oh, I got a nice little new band color. I was always black and now I went with this like nice light. I guess you'd call it like a beige. I don't even know what you would call it. Mm, it's nice. I'm the opposite. Nice. I think I, I might be sick. I got a red 23 yesterday and a red 19 today. So not great. Not great. I, uh, I've, I went, look at this. Look at this. You guys are going to love this. I went, uh, Jesus. Red, red. <laughs> oh, dead. Whoop band disconnected, 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 and then almost 100%, 90, 98 and 97%. So I'm back. I've also been uh, – I'm realizing that, A, that's a product of the Bender golf trip that I was on, and then, B, I got – good sleep but i also been microdosing these little chocolate mushroom bar things and they're great for just obviously feeling great and having a good time but they also if i take a little bit before i go to sleep i sleep like you wouldn't believe my deep sleep my light sleep my light sleep decreases i don't wake up uh, throughout the night it's amazing how much it's helping my sleep so we had this conversation rigs a couple months ago and you got cold feet about the legality of it and made us cut it from the podcast are we good now didn't know the legality of it it's appearing to be more common than i thought um so yeah i've got a, f- a friend of mine who's a friend of the program kind of hooked me up with this uh they're like these delicious chocolate bars where i i uh dm some company on on whatsapp and then they confirm my order and then i venmo them money and they send me chocolate bars and they are fucking awesome sounds super get, legal yeah. yeah very legit you <laughs> every like, transaction on whatsapp is legal <laughs> super legal dude so but i'll say i the first time i took them they come in like this uh it's like kind of a hershey bar and they've got the different rectangles and i didn't know how much it takes so i took like two rectangles of the bar and then went and played golf and by the time they hit was about three holes in and I texted this friend that hooked me up and I'm like, I went from, I was even par through three to, I couldn't get the go- the golf ball in the air, <laughs> like literally not in the air. And I was just out there like giggling, having a good time. So then the next time I took them was we had that meet and greet in LA during the U S open and I didn't want to be drinking. And like those events are really hard for me, but I wanted to feel a little something. So I took like one and a half bars. And that was a big mistake because I'm standing there and we're chit-chatting with people and they're not like you can do it in a small group. You're totally fine. But when I'm standing there, like like almost if I lean back too far, I'm going to fall over trying to like mingle with these folks. And it, I ended up getting through it fine. But I was texting this friend and I was like, I took too much again. Wrong setting. And he was like, yep, <laughs> that's wrong setting. So I'm trying to figure out the sweet spot with him. And I think I have. But the key is if I take like half of a bar like a half hour before I go to sleep. I sleep like a baby. It's amazing. Wait, so I talked to you about this a couple months ago, too. And at that point, you were taking the pills that were like legal and you could get them shipped to you. But now, and again, I'm not saying they're illegal, but now you've shifted to going on WhatsApp and getting the chocolate bars. Yeah, the pills, I, I uh, they're, yeah, the little capsules, you got to take a yeah. ton of them, I felt like, to feel anything. These chocolate bars, boys, you don't have to take shit like you take a very little amount and you feel like if you take the right amount this this friend also uh was telling me like it's the only one of the few things that we've done where doing more of it isn't better 
Like when you're drinking, drinking sure. more is generally like better. You get drunk, you have great time. You like, you know, liquid courage, the whole deal. These are like, it's, if you take too much, you're kind of fucked for like three hours until it all wears off. And, but I found the right amount and it is like you're seriously buzzed, like you're five or six beers deep that you've drank over an hour and a half, but you, there's zero hangover. You wake up with like a hundred percent recovery and it's not putting poison in your body. Now, I don't know exactly what I'm even putting in, but it seems to be, it seems to be fantastic. Yeah. And I've been doing yeah, ketam- it. Ketamine week. is like that too. Ketamine's like that too, where if you do too much, it's diminishing returns. <laughs> yeah. You do too much ketamine, yeah, you lose your no, legs, dude, uh, which no is not good. fun. And you're just stuck. Yeah. You're stuck in that point for hours. You're just like, ah, I can't get out yeah. of this. Ah. Ketamine I, I, is a real, it's a real <laughs> razor's edge. You, you, you're on the way up. It's great. And then if you do too much, you're sitting down for three hours. Yeah. For these mushroom chocolate bars, I officially want to tick the box of interested. So when yep. we're in Charlotte, okay. I would like to talk to you about it. Um, cause I, I'm at, like, cause I don't drink that much anymore. So like at all. So I, I'm always looking for it. And I, you know, the marijuana is good, but I, I've been looking into the, to the mushroom world. And I think I want to enter it. And I think you've opened the door for me here. I think, I, you know, I think we can, we can get you a dab when I think this goes under the umbrella of microdosing, which is obviously much more popular now. And like the psychedelic type, like microdosing treatments are getting a lot more popular. I know Rogan talks about them a lot. So I figured as a guy who likes to have a beverage and like with our lifestyle, you're on the road, you're meeting with people. It's like, sometimes it'd be like six nights a week. I feel like I'm drinking at least three or four beers and your body just never recovers. It's poison. So I wanted something else. Got this bad boy going and it's definitely worth a try. I think it's worth a try. But like I said, you got to be the razor's edge is the most accurate way to put it where if you're a little bit over, it sucks. And you're like, God damn it. I did it on like a flight one time. I took a little bit too much for a flight and I was already having the scaries. I was like a little bit hungover from the day before and the whole flight. I was just sitting there like, Ah, I can't believe we're in this tube flying through the sky. This is so dangerous. What if that's it's raining? Not like, yeah, like, that's oh, not where fuck. you want to be. But if you get at the right, most right setting, especially like you got three or four friends sitting at a bar or having dinner or something, you want to feel something without putting the poison of alcohol in your in your body, or you're like watching a sunset, just kind of like chilling out after a day of work. It is. <laughs> It is delightful. Fuck yeah, dude. Really I nice. love this new version of Riggs. I'll tell yeah. you that. That's yeah, you're, incredible. You, you have been nicer the last couple of months. I, I must <laughs> say, yeah. I feel like yeah. there's been less bad days. <laughs> chill, chill out. Take a couple mushroom chocolates. Life's all good, baby. <laughs> it's all good. Hell yeah, brother. So anyways, my sleep's been great with that. Um, big show. We got Min Woo Lee on the show. He is a hot young upcoming. He's got a great fun game to watch. He hits that two iron rip. He became pretty famous in the golf world during the Players' Championship, playing with Scotty Scheffler, hitting that two iron all over the place. He hits the ball a mile. Australian guy who loves America. Me and Dan sat down with him for like almost pretty much an hour uh, and just talked everything. He's at back home in Perth, Australia. Um, and he's just hanging. He talked about life, going to Greece, competing in major championships, what the future holds, how it kind of affected him with uh, the PIF and the and the live and the tour and him being kind of trying to get his tour card. And he's just um, good dude. We talked a lot about he pl- playing video games, breaking controllers. Uh, and we even nerded out for 20 or 30 minutes, talked a lot about stats and about you know, where there's a handful of things that he's trying to improve and how he looks at stats week in and week out to sort of like guide his his strategy and gameplay. And so it was a really good mix. Uh, excellent dude. And we're probably going to do a lot of stuff with him. He's our kind of guy, I feel like. Excited to hear it. Trent and I were now on that one. We did the, that was a Danny and Rig show with Min Wu. I'm excited to listen to him. I mean, he looks like um, an amazing character when you see him on just a broadcast. And I can't imagine when you just kind of peel back um, all the layers of who he actually is. He's probably just a guy's guy. Yeah, he gets that he's an entertainer. I think that's that's something that he understands. You know, he was talking about because I, I we were saying this. I, the first I heard of him was when he was like sixteen or seventeen. He was one. Of the, he was big on on Instagram, just hitting stingers against backgrounds. Really? Uh, and he talked. To, yeah, and he talked about how it's always been a huge thing for him. He loves to show off. He loves the attention. He was saying he does the mustache because it like looks cool in pictures and and the mullet because he likes to stand out. So you know, one of these new age golfers who understands he's kind of the anti you know, golfing robot. He's not just, oh, I just want to play good golf. I want to play golf. He's like, no, I like the attention. So it was really fun getting to know him. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing a lot more of him on four play stuff moving forward. Chevrolet, baby, they're working to make charging simple. They got over 110,000 
charging stations. That's unbelievable. 110,000 charging stations across the United States and Canada, and they're growing the My Chevy app. Your smartphone becomes your co-pilot when you're using the My Chevrolet mobile app with Energy Assist. The app allows you to access vehicle information like battery status, charging settings from literally anywhere. The Energy Assist feature intelligently plans your routes, tells you where and how long to charge up, gives you real-time data about charging station availability. So it's not just that you have an electric car, that you're not using gas. It's also that the technology at this point from our friends at Chevy, Chevy chevy.com slash electric is what you should go to. It's that the technology in these things is off the charts. It's like your, your smartphone meets your iPad, meets your laptop, meets AI, meets all of it, and it's just packaged into these amazing vehicles with the bow tie that's been around for 100 years. It's incredible. It's an amazing world we live in. It's an amazing world we live in, where we've come from and where we're going to. Chevy's at the helm of it all. They are at the helm of it all. That's why we love it. Go to this website because you can check out all of their styles too. You might think electric is that cool. What do these look like? It is the classic, awesome look models of Chevy with the new EV all electric situation going on, which obviously we love. It's the future, not the past. Home charging, three different levels and options available. Chevy electric vehicles offer great options for charging. All of them as simple as plugging in your smartphone. So learn more. Like I said, just go to chevy.com slash electric. A few announcements. We got um, a new video of me playing 18 holes at my favorite course in Arizona, Wico Pasuaro course. Pretty much, I obviously don't live in the same place as you guys. So Frankie and Trent are all over the YouTube filming videos all the time. I hadn't been on there in a while. So we had an extra morning, figured let's go out and just film 18 holes and toss it up on YouTube, which Brendan and Alex do just such a, an amazing job of. It could be pretty goddamn boring to watch one like, you know, mid average handicapped guy playing 18 holes. It's actually a fascinating, pretty interesting, entertaining 30 or 40 minute watch with the drone footage how cool that course is. It is Wico Pa in the middle of summer. And so I know the fairways and stuff looked kind of like shit. Wico Pa was worried about that. People do have to realize that in the summertime in Arizona, they just let these courses burn out because they're going to scalp them, overseed them in another month. And then they're going to be as pristine as it gets for the entire winter time. It's like 115 degrees. So the amount of water and effort you would have to put in is actually kind of illegal, I think, in Arizona. Uh, they're trying to conserve water. There's all kinds of laws about it now. So they let these puppies pretty much burn out in the summertime. And that's when we filmed. It was like 102 degrees, I think, before 7 a.m. or something like that. Uh, so anyways, that's why Wico Pod looked a little bit um, dicey in certain spots. But my favorite golf course in Arizona, it's delightful. We've been there for an event. We posted a couple of videos. So you can watch that. And then we got Barstool Golfs is on a rampage, it feels like. We got Stu Finer. Um, we got all kinds of hot action going on in the Barstool Golf section. Yeah, it's kind of left planet Earth is what I tweeted <laughs> yesterday. We're not we're no longer really caring about the golf. Like yeah. I mean, we brought Stu Finer's coming out on Thursday. It's the craziest video we'll ever put on our YouTube. I mean <laughs> throwing he, up the grass to check the wind. <laughs> that was on the green. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the green, and that's why he, he just had okay, no idea right. multiple times, and I'm not sure what was in the edit or not. I did the <laughs> teaser, so I only saw, like, the selects, and I was sitting here just fucking laughing for, like, hours just watching through that footage. Rico, So this Thursday, it's, it's Stu Finer. Next Thursday, it's Rico Bosco, and then the following couple of weeks, it's John Feidelberg, and it's Lil Sass. So, I mean, we really have mm. just a powerhouse amount of – talent that's coming out here to colonial springs on long island to play the same golf course we play the valley nine everyone plays the same course from the same tees and it's just you could just tell like it's a hard golf course and every single one of these guys find themselves in the same position like when you take people that don't really play golf it's it's so funny to see the misses are all the same it's just these like top like slices off the tee and they're all in the same exact spot of the fescue at that colonial every single time it's like it's groundhog's day it's absolutely insane and then once in a blue moon they'll just nut one like right at a stick and it's the greatest feeling of all time Stu finer hadn't played golf since 1988 this was his first <laughs> time he kept asking me he kept asking me like what do i do with the golf ball I was like, what do you mean? He goes, do I put it in my pocket or do I hold it in my hand while we're in the cart? I was like, you can put it in your pocket. He goes, okay, what do I do with this tea? I was like, you can put that in your pocket too. He goes, what if it stabs me in the pinky? I was like, like I don't, I don't know. Stu. It's a good question. That does happen. It stinks when that happens. He's yeah. like, how do you like, how do you release the brake 
I'm like, have you ever driven anything ever? Like you just hit the gas. And he's like, starts laughing. He was insane. He was absolutely were you, insane. Were you at all worried bringing him out to colonial? That colonial was going to be like, dude, we I had mean, him. So he might burn this place down. We've been like stacking videos. Like we've been trying to film as many videos as we can. And we had like a double shoot that day. Basically it was Stu coming in in the morning and Rico coming in in the afternoon, both to colonial and Stu was at like eight 30 in the morning. So this is like a Tuesday after Tuesday morning. Guys are out there on the range of Colonial. It's a private club. They're like probably getting in a little range session before work, or maybe they're trying to get away from the family for a little bit. Nice, quiet driving range. Super, super early. The whole entire, the whole deal. And you have Stu Finer going ballistic on the driving range. I had to tell him to shut the fuck up. Like under my breath, I'm going to shut the fuck up right now. Like now you're, you've gone too much. You've done too much. And he's like, I'm so sorry. Like he had no idea where he was stepping over the lines. So that was get so around the driving range was a little bit too much for me to handle. Like my anxiety was through the roof just because he was, he was out of control at eight o'clock in the morning, like Dude, screaming. People might think it's like a, a, an act that he puts on. It's not because he was no. the same way at your wedding at the yeah. ceremony. Oh my Dave God. and Kevin had to be like, you got to be quiet, dude. Like th this is a very special moment for a lot of people. And he's in the back just going crazy. And we're like, you, we got to calm this guy. Yeah. So that's that's going to be back, hell of a like, video like, what's on What's going Thursday? on back there? It was just Stu Finer like talking to Dave and, and Kevin normally. He's the best. He's the fucking best. I mean, it's going to be, I hope that every single person that's listening to this watches this on Thursday because it's truly a sight to behold. And uh, yeah, so Barso Goss is just kind of like off and running now. Off and running, uh, baby. And, and I want to interject, not interject, but uh, we, we don't have another show before. I believe Monday, uh, the second night of mine is coming out with Blake Griffin. Let's go. Uh, Holy at shit. At Brentwood Country Club, which is also where I grew up playing. So a little double nine at mine, nine at both of our courses. Ooh. Blake is a member there. Um, really great video. I don't think he's done any like YouTube golf stuff before. So I think people are going to be, uh, he's just the coolest guy ever. He's just the coolest dude ever. Everything you hear about Blake Griffin is true. It's no wonder that he can get with any woman he wants in the world and be friends. With, like he is, he's just one of those guys. He's one of those guys. He's in that Jack Harlow tier of like the guys. Oh. He's just cool and in, in, incarnated. So very excited for that. That was the, I asked Brendan and Alex about like how the shoot went with, with, um, Blake Griffin and they were like, He's the coolest, like most charming dude in the world. He's just the most like normal. He, he he's been so famous for so long, and he's just the most normal, chill. I mean, we t we send each other like like chipping videos all the time. Like I, he's just you know, there's no pretension at all. Well, I looked is, it up before. How much do you think? And Danny, you might know how much he made during his NBA career on the court. I do know, oh, so God. I'll let the other guys guess. I think we talked about this when we heard that Danny had him. It's a crazy number. Like all right, Riggs, so you're the you're the single million. guess. Uh, I'm going to say 175 million. It's 285 million. Yeah, it's oh, 300 my. mil. Dude, dude, <laughs> when we, so the first time I hung out with crazy. him, the first time I hung out, the first time I hung out with him, we went, we went out to dinner and he, he had, he had like a few d drinks. And at the end of the night, he's going to two max deals. Count them. One, two, two max contracts. That's, <laughs> that is so much money. And I, yeah, it's just, yeah, I can't wait it's, to watch that video. Is Jack Harlow a tier? Is that what we're taking away from like, all this? Like the Jack Harlow, like... You said he's um, in the Jack Harlow tier. Yeah, I meant like Pete Davidson. I meant like with, with women where it's like they, 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 they're they going to pull the, the the top, top, top tier. See, I, I think like there's like one guy that has his tier. I think it's Leo. I think like yeah. that's a Leo tier, you know? Like I don't okay, know. Maybe for the new generation it is Jack like a Carlo Pete Davidson. Is an American rapper and actor from Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who this person is. Never no heard clue. of Leo. No I know what Dan clue. is saying. And I guess I guess Pete Davidson would probably be a more palatable uh example. Just Jack Harlow is relatively new. I know he's been around for a while, but I think it's a little early for a Jack Harlow tier. There's certainly a Pete Davidson tier, and it's like I guess the difference between him and Leo is Leo is pulling these models that I don't even know who they are. Like right. the name comes up and I'm like, it's some 26 year old knockout. But Pete Davidson is 22. like Ariana Grande, um, Kim, Kim Kardashian, Kardashian, like these, yeah. these pop culture names. Yeah, so Derek know. Jeter tier. Sure. Yes. I'd be fine with I that. Yeah. I think that's a good comparison. I think Blake is in the Derek Jeter tier. Uh, is he of, though? That's, you that's go, saying a lot. You I want to go know. through the fuck. Dude, like, Derek Jeter has a full roster. Well, just because the, the most guy's impressive done roster more doesn't mean maybe the no, most no. impressive that's roster. That's quantity over quality. What do you mean? I want to say this. I mean, it, it, the uh -huh. list goes on and on. 
When I think about Blake Griffin, I don't. I can't think of one person that he's dated. Same. Kendall Jenner. Okay. All right. So there you go. I, that's one I probably should. She's known. hot. She's it's hot, just Derek sure. Jeter's a tough. That's God tier. I, I think. I think to be to have a tier, you got to have Mariah Carey, Jessica Alba, <laughs> Jessica Jessica Biel, Scarlett Johansson, Hannah Davis, obviously Minka Kelly, Tyra Banks. Minka Kelly is Adriana special. Lima. I mean, oh, what are we do- Dude, she's got was, a full, she she's got a full roster. <laughs> that's the, that's that's one of the all time ESPN graphics <laughs> that they definitely would not be able to make today. No, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, and I'm not comparing Jeter to Pete Davidson, but in terms of like names that people know, you're like, okay, this guy's dating very very famous people. Yeah, yeah. All right. Does Jack Harlow date famous people? I don't know. Yeah, it, I I think he's isn't he dating Dua Lipa or he was for a second. Oh, they might have dated. Yeah. But see, like, yeah, I, I, we just need you have to retract like the whole. I need a retraction from the Jack Harlow. I'll tier. give a retraction. Because we don't even know who he's dating. Like we, you, you to have a tear, it's got to be ingrained in your memory of like this guy was basically like it was one of those spinning elevator doors or like those hotel doors. I'll, of I'll, just I'll retract the, Jack the most famous not- women in the world. Yeah, Jack Harlow was not the right comparison. What I meant was, from a female perspective, he's like pretty much a perfect ten. Yeah, yeah. In terms of like looks, money, and personality. I remember I was sitting some. I think I was at an Islanders game, and there was a guy sitting behind me. And I remember looking at him, and I said to whoever I was sitting with, one of my buddies, I was like, "If Jack Harlow didn't exist, oh no, it was at the Ryder Cup." Trent, remember when we ran to the first tee? Yeah, and we were sitting there for like seven hours before the first guys teed off because we sprinted there at like three a.m. and the guy sitting behind us legitimately dressed exactly like Jack Harlow. I mean, he had on he had the little curls, he had like an earring, he had a fucking uh, turtleneck on, and I looked around. I said, Jack Harlow didn't exist. This guy would be dressed differently. That it was like the most inspiration for an outfit i had ever seen in my entire life if, if jack harlow never came out with music this guy was just in a t-shirt and shorts like it was crazy it <laughs> well, was insane just, you know when when a cool white guy appears on the scene the the white guys are like let's do this like yeah. Yeah. somebody's yeah. finding yeah. cool. culture yeah. 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 <laughs> the white guys yeah. get behind it right everybody's like all right we oh, we got we got one cool guy so we're all gonna try to look like, <laughs> like this Eminem guy's culture the best, is insane. Dude, this guy's the best like, i got you know never seen <laughs> right wait as good like as white guy. guys will church up and like we'll give him his own tier because he's the one guy who is like <laughs> oh my god but yeah the Eminem era everyone was bleaching their hair yeah. everybody you get one Everybody. cool white guy every like twenty years. Um, is Jack Harlow in that? He's pretty. Cool. He's definitely cool. He's yeah. kind of. I think we're he's just taking gassing this, up this just Jack Harlow. Well, it's it's well, gotten to the point Blake now and him where, are actually good pals because Blake produced the White Man Can't Jump movie, which oh, Jack Harlow stars in. So maybe that's why it was I on my mind. Think little Dicky's more um, talented. Well, Jack I Harlow think he might be right with talent. Yeah. Jack Harlow is going through the thing where it's like you're super popular and everybody loves you. And then people start to turn on you and they're like, oh, this guy's not as good as we thought. Oh, his last album wasn't as good as we thought it was going to be. He's sort of going through that, like the just whatever you call that cycle. So it depends on who you talk to. But he definitely had a moment where it was like, holy shit, Jack Harlow is fucking cool. Have you guys ever watched Dave, the little Dickie show? I watched the first season. Yeah. Made me uncomfortable. <laughs> really? Yeah. I wasn't a huge fan. That's oh my gosh you've got to wa- well obviously if you don't like it, you don't have to watch it but trent you got to keep up with it the the last season that just came out was maybe a perfect like season of tv i need to watch it I he, do. like i think so i think there's three seasons and the second season i believe just got away from like the first season because the first season I weird was, shit in that right yeah it's just a little bit weird like he's just like i think he tried to take it to a place that it didn't it wasn't its home run you know script third season was everything you want a little dicky show to be. It was phenomenal. But there's Jack Harlow appearances in it and it was funny. So All right, I'll watch it. That. I'll oh, watch yeah. it. and was- also for giving out little dicky recommendations, go watch his uh Sway in the Morning freestyle. Oh, those oh, are God. the best. That, that like when Jewishly. I want to get pumped up, I watch there's two of them. I watch his latest one and it is unbelievable. And people are like, "Oh, it's not a freestyle." I don't he's yeah. it's written, I get it. It's fucking amazing. If you are into freestyles, watch J. Cole, L.A. Leakers. Oh, I've seen it. Come on. Now. Okay. Okay. Bro, I'm a free. I love freestyles. Me too. I love on radio shit. shows. I'll, I'll yeah. send you a couple. Action Bronson's got a couple great ones. Like, oh, they're so good.
buddy's trip last weekend big cedar lodge amazing place i talked about it a lot um i ordered before the trip i ordered uh 36 bio lights to the uh cottage that we stayed in by the second morning of the entire trip the bio lights were gone everybody needs them has to have them after using them the first day said holy moly after how hard we sent it after how much fun we have we're out in the heat you're sweating you're dehydrated you're drinking had bio lights everybody said wow those those are absolutely incredible this is magic this is iv in a bottle and they were gone within two days boys I do appreciate the forethought of ordering some BioLite before you went. I think that's a great idea. You just need to like quadruple the order because as soon as people get a taste of them, like a morning after or the second morning after, they're like, oh, these things are great yeah. and they're helping they me get through the They taste good day. the, more they the really next do. morning because your body is craving like the salt, I think, yes. and it's just, it hits. Yep. I, it, it's right. I did it for the uh, abandoned trip too. When I went for my boy Tim's uh, birthday, we went to the abandoned trip and ordered. There was only a group of four. So we were able to get through them a couple days longer. But again, everybody realizes that that like, holy cow, I don't want to be hungover. I don't want to be dehydrated. I need to have electrolytes. This, the BioLite has six and a half times the electrolytes in one uh, bottle as your typical sports drink as many electrolytes as an iv bags you drink one of these and then within 30 minutes you're just gonna feel way 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 better like nothing happened a physician for a physician formulated hydration drink packed with electrolytes all natural ingredients like b vitamins uh vitamin c ginger root milk thistle all kinds of good stuff um so it'll combat headaches nausea fatigue associated with dehydration you'd have to drink six and a half sports drinks to get the uh, same amount of electrolytes. So buy a light when water is not enough for a limited time. Use code MELON, that's M-E-L-O-N, MELON, to get 15% off your next order of buy a light at drinkbiolite.com. That's drinkbiolite.com. Code is MELON to get 15% off. Did you guys, you guys watch Hard Knocks? You guys into Hard Knocks? I've been out on it for a few years. I it's watched Jets it like year, years so ago. But I, I haven't watched like the latest editions. Right. No, obviously right. for me, Jets fan. We got Aaron Rodgers. They're on Hard Knocks, like, uh, and so Dalvin Cook just signed. I mean, like things are looking good for my boys right now, and I'm loving Hard Knocks. But they had that fucking magician on. Did you see this on Twitter last? I night? saw your tweet. They had no. that guy Oz the magician who came oh, into the, the guy, office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy that like melted Big T's brain and basically guessed who was in his, his contact list. <laughs> yeah, bro, what this guy did to the New York Jets. I don't even I I don't know that we are allowed to keep this guy Oz walking among us. Like <laughs> the things he's he turned a deck of cards into a block of like ice with a goldfish in it while it was in Aaron Rodgers' hands. Like Aaron Rodgers was holding a deck of cards and he goes to someone in the crowd and goes, What what animal are you thinking about right now? And the guy goes, I'm thinking about a goldfish. And he goes, Aaron, open your hands. And it was a block with a goldfish in it. And everyone's like, at what point is that not even magic? I, I don't even, he's forcing people to say what he wants them to say. So like multiple <laughs> times in this 10 minute skit, he essentially like forced people to say what he's thinking. Like, like this guy was like, he goes, what number would you want to come at? Like he had him turn to the crew, the, to the group and goes, what number would you, do you wish you were? Like, if you're not like whatever number and, and he goes, just think about it. And behind him, he has the number written 10 and he goes, all right, I'm going to announce you right now. Nicole Hardman number. And he just reads 10. And everyone's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, then he makes a guy grab a puzzle pieces. He throws a bunch of puzzle pieces on a fucking table. A million of them. They're all different. He shows them. These are all different puzzle pieces. And he goes, mix them around and grab two. Now, move them from your right into your left hand and then slowly close one hand. So he closes his hand on a fucking, on a puzzle piece, right? Then he walks him over to this to this display, takes off the curtain, and it's a puzzle that says New York Jets on it and the middle is empty. And he goes, why don't you see if that, that piece that you're holding oh fits, God. right? So it, so it fits and it has the part of the New York Jets logo on it. Like it, it completes the logo and everyone's going nuts. And then on the back of the puzzle, he guessed someone's like, someone's like something. So he was like, Oh, Oh, 
On the back of the puzzle, he goes, who do you guys think you're going to beat in the Super Bowl this year? And he goes, the San Francisco 49ers. He goes, what do you think the final score of that's going to no. be? No. And he goes, 31-21. He goes, why don't you flip around the puzzle? And on the back of the puzzle, it's, it's two logos that says New York Jets versus the San Francisco 49ers, 31-21. to So try and explain that one to me. <laughs> well, I, I can't explain it, but you say you want to get rid of this guy. Good luck. Like, how are you going to yeah. get rid of this? Trey, are you <laughs> hearing what I just said? Dude, I'm hearing you, and I'm saying I can't explain it, but I'm hearing what you're saying where you're like, we got to get rid of this guy. Bro, lock him up. That's not going to work. He's going to be out of there in two minutes. Let's walk through this as a group of four human beings. You can't, How is dude. it even possible, right? You can't. It's you not only magic. Actually- it's not It's not tomfoolery. It's not sleight of hand. It's not like, oh, I did this while you were looking over here. He I'll had it what- written down. Months ago. <laughs> All right. So I have, I have a human brain. So I'll tell you where my brain goes. And I'm not even saying that I agree with this. Okay. I'm saying my brain says, after all those things that you just explained, that everybody's in on it. It can't be. I'm with you, but I'm saying my brain immediately goes there. Right. He brought like a cor- like a rookie cornerback up from the middle of the thing. That guy's just like, there's no way. Cause other, no I have way. no other explanation. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> right. Like big yeah. T wasn't in on it. Fuck man. I don't or know. It's he? just. If he was, then like we're like we have to like put people in jail. It's like you can't have yes. that. You know what I mean? Like you can't. No, so there's no. You guys got to go watch this. I know. I explain it, but you got to go see it for yourselves because he's a fucking wizard, man. <laughs> I mean, to complete the puzzle, and then on the back of the puzzle is just the final score of what this guy thinks the Super Bowl is going to be is not even real. <laughs> How does Aaron Rodgers come off? What's your What's your impression of a Rodge? I actually really like him in Hard Knocks. I think he's a nice guy. Like I, I think that he's great for an organization. If he's as good as he's supposed to be this year. I know he's old, but it'll be a plus. But what I think, what he's doing for the organization, I think, is way more than what he'll actually do on the field. And that's saying a lot because I think they'll be a playoff contender and hopefully, you know, do well in the next two years, hopefully win a Super Bowl. That's obviously the goal. But just seeing the way he's interacting with people, he's changing the culture immediately. And, and, and all the coaches have said it on, on Hard Knocks. They're like, you bring in a guy like this, it's a game changer. Just like practices are different. The way he's talking to everyone's different. It's fucking awesome, man. It's a really good series. Uh, I'll watch it. I've been watching docs. I've been watching docs. I've been. I talked about the Johnny one and the um the Jake Paul one, and then I watched the Johnny couple, one after a couple of uh, uh, chocolates last night. I threw on the Kardashian Kanye divorce one, and that one is fucking wild. I gotta mm. tell you that. I gotta tell you that. It's on HBO Max. It's really I didn't good. Know that existed. I didn't either. I was scrolling through and they got two episodes and they basically do a whole one from Kanye's perspective and a whole one from wow. Kim's perspective. But it's like Kanye's lawyers and then Kim's lawyers and their best friends and like stuff chiming in. And it makes you an amazing way. It makes you feel bad for like both of them just being like in that spot and the whole thing and how unnatural it is and what they're dealing with and the whole the whole deal and then how like messy the divorce is and how Kanye's mental health was declining after his mom passed away. And then he's like in no way, anything like the Kardashians. He's even though he's wildly famous, he's from the South side of Chicago. He likes to kind of like just be creative and keep to himself and say whatever's on his mind. Whereas the Kardashians are obviously like very scripted in the way that they, you know, what, it, what gets out to the media and how those worlds clash. And it was fucking wild. So I watched both episodes of that last night as I was falling asleep on the chocolates and they're very good. So there's a lot of good stuff out there to watch. There's so um, much good stuff out there right now, so which is great. The telemarketer show on HBO is good I too. Heard I just watched really that. Good. I don't even know what that is. It's coming out like every Sunday or something. It's a big like HBO weekly thing. Basically, these kids, these guys just start a documentary in, in like the 90s or whenever this was um, working at this telemarketing company because they realized it was like the biggest scam of all time. So it's all this old footage of these like lunatics at this telemarketing company. It was the beginning of like getting calls and they would basically say like, oh, we're calling on behalf of like the police department in your neighborhood and like technically they were they were correct because they would pay like the police department like a hundred thousand dollars and then they'd call on behalf of their name and raise millions and millions and millions and they're just calling being like three police officers passed away this year we'd love to get a 75 dollar thing and it's like legit criminals calling like they were they were taking people out of jail to just like millions of guys are call or thousands of guys are calling it was, it's a it's a wild documentary, and these two guys basically like try and bring it down from the inside. It's only been one episode so far, but uh, it's really good. It's really really good. 
telemarketers, I, I think it's one. called on HBO on uh, Max. Uh, I ran into on on Monday, Mister and Mrs. Portnoy were out there at the Barstool Classic. Oh, they are just very nice. the Lovely. the sweetest thing. It was very nice to see them. Uh, I know that their cousin uh, Mike. Dave's dad was not out in Arizona. He had been, I believe, going through some health stuff. So it was nice to see him out there active, mingling with everybody. That guy just cracks me up. I saw him, and he's got a big, sweet tooth. And so I saw him uh, for the first time in the in the, uh, in the the clubhouse, and there was, like, a whole lunch thing. And he came out from, like, the room where the whole buffet was, was separate from where the dining was. So he had to go in there. And he came out with just a tray of two brownies, and one of them had already been eaten in the or a plate, and the other <laughs> one he's about to eat. I kind of just caught him red-handed, and then I was talking to Cousin Linda, who's obviously Dave's mom, and she was like, did you hear he had already had two brownies? And I was like, before I even saw him, and the first time I'd seen him in, like, two years, he had just crushed two brownies. And then afterwards, there was like a dinner and hangout too at TPC Boston, which did an excellent job. I think we're going to go back there next year. And he came over to me, whispered, and he goes, just so you know, so I can get ahead of it. I'm going over there and I'm getting two cookies right now. <laughs> so Dude. He's unbelievable. He is he's, the he's, the clips though of him from over the years and still even when he when Frankie did the Barcelona radio drop like a week ago or whatever it was, he just always brings it because he's just he immediately brings you into his world. Like yeah. it doesn't matter who he's talking to. If he's talking to Kevin, if he's talking to Dave, if he's talking to Big Cat, anybody, he immediately brings you in and when he brings you in, it's he's one of the funniest people on the planet. They uh they made sure to go out of their way multiple times to to tell me to say hi to you, Trent. And they weren't and they wanted to clarify that that wasn't a token thing. They were like, you need to make sure that you do this. So I, I'm telling you that the the Portnoy parents say hi to you. Uh Thank you. and it's very it's always very interesting to be around them in the limited spurts now versus when we were doing the show with them because it's such a different side of Dave and they call him David. And they're so proud of him and the way that they speak about Dave, whereas like we all fear him. We did a whole show earlier this week about fearing him and Dave. And he's like this bad boy of sports media. And they're like, that's our beloved son who we are just so proud of and who he's great. And so it's really, really fun talking to them. And it's very endearing hearing them talk about oh, what you hear. What do you think about the news last week? And they're going on about it. And they're like, it's, so, it's great talking to them. So they're just the sweetest people on earth. Um, and, and Dave's mom, for people who don't know was, I believe the golf coach of both the men's and the women's team at like the Swampscott high school and like the first one in history. So she's a golf nut. They both love golf. They were just, they were kind of hanging around with Zah and they're hanging around with Dana beers and they were just mingling with everybody. So it was lovely to see them up in Boston. They're, uh, they're the best. That's great. That warms my heart that they said, hello. I, I cannot wait until the next time that I see them. Very adamant that I said, hello. So, um, <laughs> I got to get going. We're all meeting in uh, Charlotte. Yeah, we got a little bit of filming, I got to uh, fold my laundry and then pack up and then go to the airport. So Min Woo Lee is up next. Yep. Uh, fantastic interview. Awesome guy. Glad we finally got him on uh, BMW this weekend. Not, nobody on this show except Dan maybe gets that fired up about the FedEx Cup. I care way more. I'm like, I'm like JT care way more about just finding out who's on this Ryder Cup. Um, but that's going on. If you care about that BMW, they're in Chicago. I think big cat. And then we're kind of doing some stuff, getting involved PMT uh, out there at the BMW. So enjoy that this weekend. We'll be back on Tuesday. Enjoy Min Woo Lee. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It's the golf capital of the world was recently voted America's single favorite buddies trip destination. If you are looking for a good time golf trip or you will leave with memories that will last a lifetime, Myrtle Beach is that spot. It's no secret why this place was voted the number one buddies trip golf destination. There's over 70 courses, I believe. They've got some phenomenal top 100 type courses. They've got more accessible courses that are not in the top 100 level that you're still going to have an amazing time at. We know because we've been there a few times at this point. They got bars. They got seafood restaurants. They got piers that have restaurants on them. They got go-karts, mini golf. They got everything at Myrtle Beach. Everything. It's going amazing. next week. Yeah, you're going, going for the amateur, week. right? Playing in the World Am. Two days of the World Am. Um, hopefully, it's a little cooler than the last time we played, but always <laughs> fun going to Myrtle Beach. It's like a home away from home for this podcast. It really is. 
As it should be. Whatever your budget is, Myrtle Beach has something for you and for your buddies with more off-the-course activities, breweries, bars, restaurants, nightlife, any other golf destination. It's no wonder why hundreds of thousands of golfers make a yearly pilgrimage to Myrtle Beach. If you would like to plan a golf trip, uh, visit www.playgolfmyrtlebeach.com. They get all the info on golf packages, courses, hotels, and things to do in one convenient spot. Uh, and by the way, if you're the group leader who organizes your buddy's trip, you're eligible to play golf for free. So be sure to just ask one of Play Golf Myrtle Beach's package partners for more info when you plan your golf trip. If you want to visit Myrtle Beach, Play Golf Myrtle Beach is giving away a uh, golf trip for you and three buddies as well. So the other link you can visit is foreplaymyrtlebeach.com. You can enter simply to win a three day, three round golf trip to Myrtle Beach. That's foreplaymyrtlebeach.com. Enter to win a three day, three round golf trip to Myrtle Beach. Let's do this. I'm very excited to chat with Min Woo Lee. Yes. Um, you're all over the place on social media. You kind of were all over the place this year on the PGA Tour, Players Championships, and major championships. Now you're just kind of chilling out, I understand, back back home. Yep, I'm home right now. Oh, it's great. Um, my girlfriend and I were in Greece for a week, uh, and that was pretty relaxing you know just cocktails by the pool so that was nice and then um yeah just got back uh and hanging out practicing for the next one i know that you uh you're still living in australia i perth is that right i think your agent said perth Perth, um you you just locked up your pga tour card uh for next year through the non-member points um what's the plan i mean i I would think that saying say congratulations staying in australia feels like a bit of a of a hassle if you're going to play on the PGA Tour. So what's the plan? Well, I'm not sure if that's actually 100% confirmed because I haven't gotten any news about having my tour card. So you might have some inside scoop. Did there, I just so. break the news? <laughs> Maybe. But um, I know I'm pretty close. I know I'm very close. The threat, Yeah, the threshold is, you know, X amount of points. And I know I'm like right around there. So uh, we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, I've, I'm not 100% sure right now. But I think... If I do get my card, uh, I'm probably going to move to Vegas. Um, I've got a couple friends out there, and uh, every time I go there, I tend to play well right afterwards. So um, I don't know something about Vegas. Uh, the the move to a city for golf or a location for pro golfers I find very interesting because we have like the – there's a couple of big decisions you guys make, I feel like. One of them is who your caddy is, which we always get into, and it's always an interesting tale – one of them is obviously where you're going to live. There's there's Jupiter, there's uh, Sea Island, there's Scottsdale, there's Vegas. There's sort of a handful of kind of hot spots. So, like, what are the – I know you said you played well, you got a couple of buddies, but what are the other key kind of criteria for how you're going to make that choice? Uh, yeah, it's – for me, um, it's probably, like, friends, who's there. Um, I'm really good friends with Kurt Kuyama. Uh, and you know, when I was out on the European tour or the DP world tour, like he would, you know, if I had a couple weeks off, you know, come over to Vegas and, you know, I just had so much fun there and the food's amazing and the courses are awesome too. So, um, and also good people. So that's one. And then obviously there's a tax part of it. Um, don't want to go anywhere with massive tax, um, obviously because of the money and, uh, that's, you know, that's a big part of it. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, f- good courses, friends, and and the tax part. I mean, uh, I haven't really hung hung out too much in Florida, but um, you know, I I think for the first couple of years or first bit, you know, a lot of people have said, you know, just go to Vegas, see how it is, and um, just check it out. Um, but you know, I, every time I did go out out there, I I really enjoyed it. So it just yeah, um, it's all part of it. I mean, I know the weather's like tough everywhere you know it gets hot everywhere it gets so um yeah just good people and good you're food not a florida guy we're, we're not a good florida podcast florida. yeah exactly. no you're not a florida guy <laughs> you're more of a vegas guy for sure just everything about you <laughs> <laughs> tell me about uh let him cook and social media and all this you you are probably um the most social media um how do i put this I don't know if focus is the right way. You're the, you're, you might be the best at it of any of these young players, and, and you really take an interest in it. You obviously have a hell of a video editor. Um, tell me about this sort of initiative that you seem to have to, to engage this way. Uh, yeah, it just all kind of kicked off probably around the players. Um, I was in that final group with Scotty, and then 
um, since then it's like I've kind of blown up and kind of it's been crazy. I mean, I, since I was like a little kid, I've always been pretty good at social media. I've always was like had the biggest social media presence um, when I was like 16, 17, 18. And uh, it's kind of like now catching on that what I really wanted to do, you know, um, every, anything I post, you know, a lot of people like and enjoy and the stuff that I put out. So um, it, I don't know where the let him cook started. It just was a thing and I just posted it once and it just caught on it. Like it hasn't stopped. Um, the fire is still flaming and uh, it's it's going hard. Um, and yeah, Jake on the PJ tour and Muhammad, they do a really good job with my, um, Mo is the best. Mo is the best. So like, yeah, they just, you know, they just first time they just, you know, if you want some stuff, we'll, we'll record, you know, a couple holes of your practice round and we'll see what we can do. And, uh, yeah, they surprised me, you know, two holes. It's like, I don't know, 10 shot, 15, 10 to 15 shots. You know, you're just throwing the ball down and chipping and putting and they somehow make it look like. You've done a whole workout video and made it end up looking pretty cool and seem like you paid this guy a million dollars just to do it. But no, they did it in two holes in 30, 20 minutes. So uh, it's it's pretty cool what they do and how they do it. And um, yeah, I've, it's been it's been pretty cool the last month or two. Um, the videos have been amazing. So hopefully we can keep it going. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. It's been a really fun ride. I've always loved social media and a bit of the attention. So um, just got to back it up with some good golf. A couple of things on the social media. First, I was going to say it's a outrageous move by Dan to eat in the middle of the podcast, which is an audio podcast. But <laughs> second, right. I would Man, say man's it's do probably what he has to do. very, it's probably very much. It, there is clearly a difference between guys that are younger. Nope. Oh no, no. It's an insane move to have shitty Wi-Fi on audio. Yeah, podcast. Yeah, that's true. Thought the company could put up put up a hotspot or something, you know. You would think so. My Wi-Fi just stinks. <laughs> How, it's also amazing that you stay in a nice hotel and the Wi-Fi just sucks. I've never understood that. Like, it's I know, 2023. Oh, I don't get it. Yeah, it's got to be the no worst sense. thing. It's got to be the... Oh. Yep. Okay, I'll start. Um, was it at the players where you got a cramp in the middle of your backswing? Yep. Um, not on my backswing. I, it was on the 15th hole at the players at the TBC Sawgrass. And I... um. It's it's actually such a funny story. It's I, I could go on, but um, go on. I, we got time. Oh, okay. So okay. So uh, I played Bay Hill the week before, and I had like an allergic reaction under my eye, um, and I thought it was the things that I was taking. So like, it, I thought it was my hydration tablets. So I end up not taking my hydration tablets, and just you know, every I pretty much drink one, probably two to four tablets a day. And so at Bay Hill, I just said, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. And also the beginning of the week, I said, no. Nah. Um, so I drove down. I missed the cut at Bay Hill. Sunday, drove up to players and I hit like five balls. And I said, guys, I can't like to my caddy and my manager. I said, I can't do this. My eyes were swollen like half. Couldn't couldn't even look. Had my sunnies on because I was so embarrassed. And uh, so, yeah, that pretty much it, it swelled down um, by the time it got to Thursday. But so I didn't have any didn't have any electrolytes ended up swinging it on 16 and I've got a cramp and it's my first time ever getting a cramp and it was in my calf and it like started from the bottom and it shot up um to my um calf and I was like oh my god I've just I've just snapped something or it just kind of reminded me of when KD Kevin Durant um like popped his Achilles and it just yeah. felt and felt like it and I'm like oh my god this is so bad like I was I think I was like six under or something like that at that point I was leading the tournament and I had to get <laughs> I had to get Tom the physio out from the um, PJ tour truck, and he was he was massaging my calf every between every shot from that tee shot. So um, it was a pretty scary moment, but it was fun. I mean, it added some flavor to the round and to the tournament, and um, a bit of the social media. So um, that, yeah, everything you know, that's an interesting reason. thing that you guys are actually allowed to have that happen. I remember when Brooks was having some problems. I think this was at Harding Park, maybe, and he had the the physio come out and like give him a full rub down on the yeah. tee in between shots. I don't know that people realize that you can do that. So you basically had like a, a walking masseuse. Why don't you just have that every round? I don't. I don't know. It sounds amazing, and you should. But yeah, I, I don't know if it's just for emergency or what, but. Yeah, I, I needed it. I was I couldn't I couldn't swing. I couldn't like put weight on my right leg after that. So I ended up making a par and a and a really good bogey on seventeen, hitting the water on seventeen and made made it up and down from the drop zone and um 
yeah, didn't didn't make a par on the last hole, but oh, it was a pretty good round uh, regardless. Uh, and yeah, it was a really good week. It was um, fun. And yes, I did drink a lot of my electrolytes after that. I didn't think it was yeah, cute. I didn't think it was allergies or anything. I thought it was, but yeah, I drank as much coconut water as I can and uh, a lot of um, a lot of salt. Uh, I how much do you love that two iron and wh- and where does that love for that thing come from? Is it just crazy fun to hit? Uh, it's, it's such an amazing club. I just, I wish I had that in my three wood and every other club, the confidence I have with it. I just, I don't know why I just, just comes out like a bullet and doesn't have any spin and it kind of goes exactly where you want it. And, uh, you know, being, being from Perth, it's very windy and you need to hit kind of low shots. Uh, I kind of learned how to do it there and then kind of asked for it at TBC. I hit it, I don't know, like five, six, seven times during the round, which is not really usual and um it kind of sh- i kind of showcased it there how long i can hit my two iron and um hit, hit a stinger now and then um but i've always liked to hit that stinger you know I, obviously tiger did it back in the days and then i don't know i can't, kind of came out and put it on social media and everyone loved it and um yeah it's it's a cool shot to have it's tough but it's 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 awesome shot to have I remember that was my first uh, introduction to you was you were like 17 or 16. And it was like, who is this guy who's absolutely ripping stingers down in Australia? It was like you were almost like the the, the DOD king. You know, there's like this guy now who hits driver off the deck, whoever, except for you then became like a top 50 player in the world. So it's strange to watch this guy who I had seen in this like social media ecosystem actually like make it as a professional golfer. I thought you were just like Mr. Stinger. Yeah, exactly. Like it's, yeah, it's, you know, I always kind of just wanted to show off and post stingers and it ended up blowing up and it was, it was crazy. It was amazing. Uh, and, uh, now I'm here, just try to do the same thing and it's blowing up even more. So it's, it's a quite cool feeling. Um, but yeah, at a time there, I was, you know, playing some amateur golf and junior golf and just loved hitting stingers. Like, uh, I don't know if you guys been to Sahali, but that's where I started hitting them and, um, the trees are massive and you can, it's kind of a dark background so you can actually see the ball, ball move left and right. And yeah, it kind of blew up from there and I've always loved the social and the stingers. So yeah, I've was kind of known for hitting stingers. Is there uh I mean, nowadays everybody talks about distance and guys are hitting it so far and bombing gouge is there, do you feel any pressure to be like, yeah, I can hit my two iron 300 yards or, or whatever it is, but I kind of need to, uh, I need to be able with the players or wherever to just whip out driver and be just as confident. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, I, I love my driver as much as my three wood, uh, as much as my two iron. I've hit that thing so good. Um, and lately it's been amazing. So, um, I've always, I've always hit it far, but straight so um it's it's nice to actually get a combination that you know yeah I know a lot of people can relate to that you know bomb it but go sideways but um yeah you know it's it's pro golf and you know I, I used to hit a draw and now as soon as I turned pro I started to hit a fade just because I wanted to be a bit more accurate and um it's starting to slowly get into my craft and get into my golf and uh it's you know you see a lot of people out there hitting fades now just to hit some more fairway so um, I still need to hit a couple more fairways around, but um, yeah, it's it's nice to. There is a little bit of pressure, you know. When I first came out of tour, I was number one on the DP World Tour, and um, but after that word came out, oh, this little kid can hit it 330 yards. I ended up just smoking it as soon as I had driver in my hand. So, not to get too ahead of myself, I know I just just had to rewind and kind of pull back my swing speed and just just hit it out of the middle and hit hit fades and. Um, yeah, it's, I guess it's slowly coming to that point and now I can rip it a little bit and sometimes it comes out straight. Do you, do you feel like on the PGA tour, it, it's more penal with the misses where it's like, you can't just kind of step up there and, and mash it three thirty Like maybe you could back in Europe. Yes. And no, uh, it's the thing is like the fairways, some of the fairways are so, uh, the rough is so juicy that hitting driver is actually not too bad. And then you can, you know, hit a wedge out of there. So um, it's nice when you do hit fairways and bomb it because obviously you can score, but it is, uh, it, it is tough. I mean, some of these courses, like I've questioned myself, like, why am I here? And I, like at Bay Hill, I think I shot like 30 over for the last two years. And it's been, after the first year, you'd think you, you kind of learn from it, but no, I still shot like 
over 10 over this year. And it was, it, it's so tough. I, I just, yeah, it questions me and I'm like, maybe I'm not fit enough for this, but I think that course is just tough. Um, there's t- some of these cost- courses are very, uh, penal, but you learn. It's, uh, it's interesting to hear you say that because I feel like you're, uh, you're a big events kind of guy. I mean, you got to, you know, you finished T6 at the players, you're T18, I believe the PGA top five at the U S open. Do you feel like you, you know, in these big events when it kind of forces you or, or the, the moment drives you to kind of lock in more? Yeah, for sure. I just, oh, I've been saying like majors are tough. You know, when you make par, it's actually not that bad of a score, but you know, when you go out onto courses that are like 25, 30 under, you make a bogey and you're like two, two steps back. And especially like, these guys are so good on the PGA Tour. Like, if you if you make a bogey, like half the field is making birdie on a pretty tough hole. So, it it had, it's a bit of a mindset thing, you know. At majors, if you if you do make a bogey, you know you can make a birdie just like and make it straight back. But you know, there's guys out there on the PGA Tour that just birdie every hole, and they're just so good. So, I, I think that's the difference between a major and a and a scorable PGA Tour tournament. Yeah, it's a funny it's a funny difference because we were talking like Brian Harmon who wins the open by six and then we were like that same week the kind of opposite field event, I think it was the Barbersaw or something where somebody was like twenty five under. I think they did, but we're like, I don't know that he would have won that that same week, yet he wins the open by six strokes. Yeah, it was amazing. That those two first two rounds were just unbelievable. I mean, I, I thought I played okay and I was coming top five in the week coming coming to the weekend and I was like Holy shoot! I'm seven shot or eight shots back, and all this guy must have played some really good golf. So, uh, yeah, I mean, props to him. It's it's it was an amazing run. Created by fans for fans, Game Time is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. They guarantee the lowest price. I was texting with Alex Bush the other day. He went to the Joe Bros, I believe, and I was just saying, it feels like this podcast has been going to shows lately, and we have been raving, no pun intended, about it because going to shows is about as cool a thing as you could possibly do. It's inspirational. It's spiritual. It's motivational. You're out there watching just these insanely talented, hardworking, creative badasses, whether it's comedy, whether it's a concert, whatever it might be. And Game Time is the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports that's going to help you get there. It's a click. It takes a few seconds. Bang, you're just there at these events through Game Time. Yeah, I went to Tyler Childers and Billy Strings. Those concerts were amazing. I used Game Time for both of those. I've also been itching to go to a baseball game. I, I just Whoa. I feel like I want to head to a baseball game. I don't know where. Maybe Yankee Stadium. Maybe uh, where the Mets play. I can't think of the name right now. City, City Field. Field. Um, and I'm definitely going to use game time. So it's, yeah, it's, it's summer. Summer's kind of winding down, I guess you could say. So you got to start getting your concerts and your, and your games in now. Got to get them in now, but you can get games in, um, coming up real soon. Football's coming back. We obviously will have, uh, hockey and basketball before it's far too long. One of my big goals is to get to an, uh, Miami Messi game at some point. I know Ooh. I don't really know when the MLS season is, but I know I'm seeing that little fucker all over my timeline right now. And I'm a huge Messi guy. We went through the whole goddamn thing during the Argentina run in the World Cup. Now he's here. He's scoring every game. Miami went from like a joke to I think they're in the final now in like two days, it feels like, because Messi's so sick. He's scoring free kicks all the time. I got to get to a Messi game. Game time is going to help me do it. So you just download the game time app or go to the website, enter your email. Redeem code 4FORE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, enter your email, redeem code 4, and you'll get 20% or uh, $20 off your first purchase. You are, uh, as of right now, I think just the second best golfer in your family. As of right, you know, that's just what the numbers say. Uh, talk I'm to trying to get through an interview without, without my sister mentioned. <laughs> Okay, then we won't talk about your sister. No, no, no. I didn't realize it was a sensitive topic. Maybe it went a couple majors and then maybe we'll stop talking about your sister. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the the, uh, relationship like and and how much are you guys going back and forth on a a weekly basis? Like, oh, nice playing or like sarcastically, like, why do you suck right now? Um, Yeah, no, we talk every week. You know, we say our good lucks and good jobs. Um, It's pretty tough out there. You know, it's, it's not. We would like to be a family and be together, but where I mean, I see my sister maybe like two, three times a year, which is you know not much. We obviously got different schedules. 
maybe if I'm in, I'm in America, we can see each other a bit more. But um, yeah, you know, our family's not together too much, so it's it's you know it's nice words, and I still annoy the shit out of her every time I see her, and she gets pissed off at me. But that's normal, I think. And um, yeah, I'm you know just trying to be a good brother and um, support her as much as I can. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we don't we text probably every week, um, call every couple of weeks, so. Um, we're, we're pretty close though. We're, we're a very close sibling relationship and, um, yeah, it's been like that since a long time ago, but yeah, I annoy the shit out of her. So she doesn't like my company sometimes. That's bro. Yeah. That's siblings. I think everybody's like that. What's the, uh, that's normal. What's, like, that's normal. what's the craziest or most interesting thing you've ordered on Amazon before? No. Oh. So that story went like crazy for no reason. Like. I mean, they asked that. why Internet do you like America and what, what, and yeah. And I was just like, oh, you know, it's, it's crazy how in America compared to Australia, we don't have like that one day service or two day service. And so we got same day uh, here in New York. Uh, yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. It's scary. If you really think about it, like you order <laughs> something in the morning and you get it in the afternoon you're like, that's, that's scary. Like, um, there must be so many people working for Amazon and just, uh, we know it's obviously the biggest company in the world, but, um, uh i don't know maybe a gaming laptop or a gaming you know i broke my playstation controller so i ordered it and i'm back on with the boys the next day just a rage like a rage Love america break of the rage break of the controller yeah no i just i mean not rage break but just overused i i, I during covid i did have a big um big gaming game big gaming session um every day and uh yeah i was a pretty um addictive call of duty player yeah i uh i mean i've been known to throw a break a few controllers like i've broken two xbox controllers probably in the last year i it's all from fifa yeah for me it's all from fifa when like somebody when you're just dominating somebody and they score some dog shit goal and then they refuse yep. to just hit yep. the a button and move on and they're like celebrate in your face i just I'll yeah, watch oh, yeah you gotta watch it you gotta watch it what the fuck you fucking yep. turd like just hit let's go to the like let's keep moving like when i score it's just you hammer the button you go to the you know let's let's keep yeah, going yeah. i hate that but that's why they do it yep play mind tactics yeah uh do you uh look at you know i'm, I'm always curious because the, the the players who come up now the young players are, are, are seemingly smarter more ready to win um than they were before and, you know a lot of that is is kind of credited these days to college golf you you went a different route um why did you decide to turn professional as soon as you did was there ever a thought of going to college where would you have gone kind of that that whole that whole question um simple answer is i didn't want to study um so i think Good a lot of people can relate to me a lot of people can relate to me but you know they just had to do it um, um <laughs> the golf australia program was amazing uh it was pretty much the college without the studying so um I had a good thing going uh, when I was, you know, an amateur and, uh, you know, I, I like, I didn't mind the travel, um, you know, they would pay for me to go play US junior, US amateur and all the US events. And um, yeah, I kind of wanted to turn pro a year earlier and, you know, my team said, no, nah, you're not ready. And I definitely wasn't ready. And um, a year later, I ended up, ended up turning pro um, when I was 20 or 21. Uh, so that was my my trajectory i didn't didn't really have too many colleges um like in mind uh the furthest i went with the college was asu arizona um i talked with the coach there for a little bit and then you know i didn't really get going um i did i, I didn't really have talks with stanford but a little bit but i was like oh, how am i gonna be at stanford if you don't want to study not, if i'm not i don't studying think that would have been a good fit for you <laughs> exactly but it would have been a couple of my friends are there and it would have been cool to rep the rep the S and the and the card. So um I feel like I need a need a college to rep just to just just for I think it, you know? should just start pretending that you went to Stanford. Just just get like a, just get an cool. S, a head cover, put an S on your bag, and when people <laughs> ask you be like, Yeah, you know, I've I've always felt a deep connection to Stanford. There's no law that says you have to go there to rep it. Yeah, that would be cool. I mean I would have loved to. That would have been cool. Um, just for like six months for a year. I, if I did go to college, I wouldn't have gone for too long. Um, just for the experience and uh, the college life. But who knows what I would have done if 
I did get into the college life. We know it's a bit of fun and a um, few drinks now and then. So uh, we could have lost you know, at ASU. ASU could have been could have been yeah, one of the path diverged. Oh uh, yeah, I knew it was a bit of a party school, but kind of made me want to go. Uh, tell me about this this Greece trip. I feel like I see people on social on Instagram going to Greece <laughs> a lot. How'd you? Did you just plan it yourself? Do you have somebody plan it? Do you use like a travel service? So my girlfriend has been to Greece before, but I've never been. So she was like, "Oh, let's go to this place I haven't been," and I was like, "Sweet." I it was right after the Open. Um, I played three tournaments or four tournaments in a row. And I'm like, if we're gonna go on a holiday, I'm having a holiday. I'm not, I'm not hiking or going up some mountain. I just want to sit by the sit by the pool and drink some cocktails. So that's what we did. Um, I mean, it could have been anywhere. It could have been in America or it could have been in Australia. But um, Greece was the just choice. We planned it like a couple months before uh, the Open and. It's it's just a nice place. The food's decent, the sun's pumping, and the drinks are nice. Um, so it's it's a good combination. I gotta think that the trips are more fun after a T five and a major too. Do you allow yourself like, yeah, you know what, we can we can upgrade the room or we can get the nicer ca- you know cab staff tonight because uh, we just we just had a good week. Yeah, well, we already already did that. I already said, you know what. I played pretty good. I'm going to get the best room and the all-inclusive hotel. It could have been a thousand dollars cheaper, but we're like, you know, whatever. And then, um, yeah, I didn't really celebrate, uh, the U S open top five. I mean, I probably should, but yeah, it was kind of, you know, as golfers, you kind of just go next straight to the next week and you have to grind, um, got into the travelers the week after I made a top 10 and damn two top tens. And I was like, shit, this is pretty good. I'm actually not bad at golf. And, um kept the going <laughs> uh that travelers event i feel like that travelers event is just a sneaky beloved by the players beloved by the caddies oh so good it's unbelievable it's the crowds were a joke they were so good and um the course is so fun i i love the course i mean i, I heard rory you know say it's outdated and stuff but i loved hitting my two iron everywhere and yeah. i just it was so fun i really enjoyed the course you know there was a it was nice going from a US Open from like, you know, rough being Bermuda and thick and shit to play, like not shit to play, but hard to hit it out um, to to playing Travelers where it's, you know, birdies um, and quite fun. So I really enjoyed those two weeks. It was fun, but the crowds were incredible. It's just a nice, nice place. So we had an interesting story with that US Open Travelers. We were supposed to shoot a side gig episode uh, the week of the Travelers, you and I, I don't even know if your agent told you this, but we were supposed to. Yes. And we were rooting really hard for you at the US Open <laughs> because it was like, oh, we want, you know, we want this guy who we're shooting with next week uh, to play well. I didn't even think about Travelers, you know, for whatever reason. <laughs> you finished top five and I get the message from your agent the next morning being like, unfortunately, Min Woo is going to play the <laughs> Travelers. And I texted the boys and I go, a T11 would have been really fucking nice. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Should have not rooted for this guy. So I'm personally, I'm personally upset that you that you played as well as you did that week. So yeah, sorry, we got to postpone that. But I'm up for it. I'm definitely up for it. I just uh, before this, I just watched your obstacle course thing, Matt. That looks so fun. <laughs> the amount of the amount of <laughs> planning that remember that Riggs, how much planning went into that? Oh yeah, who and rolled like, their ankle? That was that was, that was me. That was me, and it's still kind of fucked. Like a, <laughs> it's it's like a ninety five percent, but occasionally, you know how they say like once you roll your ankle once, it's susceptible to rolling it a lot. So I'll just be walking, yeah, normally, and yeah. there'll be like a slight, you know, like former little <laughs> tiny <laughs> creek indentation, and I'll just be gone. My right foot will just give out. Oh and no! Like, oh okay. no! But yeah, that was a bit of a that was a scene. There was a ton of planning and preparation, and then. Per usual, once we hit go, it was just a complete shit show the whole time. Oh, so fun! Yeah, it looks so good. I would, I would love to do that. We'll, uh, we'll get some stuff going. I feel like you'd be, a, you're going to be a big <laughs> hit on the YouTube with your antics out there. Uh, I'd love to. It's fun. Is your, uh, is 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 David Duvall your your style inspiration with those glasses? Uh, not really. I just. I needed to protect my eyes, and I look. I have a big head, and it look every sunny's sunglasses look shit on my head except that one. So I said, you know, I'll, I'll wear this, and it kind of that kind of blew up. And then 
the mo. I grew I grew the mo for like a few months, and there's a few whiskers there, and uh, I ended up looking pretty good from far away on the photographer photo. So thought you know I'll keep it. Now I got to kind of keep it because it's just my thing. So um, the the hair's growing real long. So I don't know what I'll do with that. I don't know if I'll keep growing growing the salad or um, cut it down and. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, feel like, the you should, I feel like you should get like sleeve of tattoos. Just be like the golfer <laughs> that no one else has ever been before. Like, just go with the mustache, go with the glasses, go with the hair. Just be that. I don't guy. know if we can. I don't know if we can on the BJ tour. What you think or they have a rule tour. against tattoos? I think so. I think you're not allowed to have it showing. That can't be true. Well, I mean, who has a who has Doesn't tattoos? Ricky Max has one. Ricky, yeah, has but one. I mean, Dan Ricky's Rappaport got Olympics. Three. That's, that's yeah, I know. But the Olympics, are, you know, you can. Get away with that. Yeah, that's you well. You don't it. see any. You don't see any like sleeves. You don't see, you don't see has sleeves. Full yeah, yeah, anything yeah. aggressive like that. Um, I, yeah, that'd be interesting if they if they gave you shit for that. But oh, I, the sunnies. First I'll do a temporary all, one. Yeah, yeah, you should. The term sunnies. I'm stealing that. <laughs> We're using that all the time. And I feel like yep. over the last couple of years, we've seen guys just go with the sunnies more often in general. Like Phil's been rocking them. I mean, I know he's not tour anymore, but I feel like a lot of guys, Ricky's been rocking them. A lot of guys have been rocking the sunnies lately. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I've been, since I've got this like little like red part on my eye, I've noticed that a lot with the guys, especially in Australia, the UV rays, unbelievable crazy. So I kind of need to wear it or else my eyes would probably get fried in like 10 years. So um, I need to, yeah, just protect my eyes and i think it's more for the protection not just for the looks because you'd rather kind of play without sunnies but you know you get used to it at first i hated it i didn't like it there was like you know that like the depth perception you know got a little bit the ball got a little bit bigger and i I didn't like it at first but at, i mean at the end of the day if you can you eat healthy foods for yourself right for your for your body and it's the same for the eyes so might as well do that at an earlier stage in my life and um yeah make sure it looks good while you're doing it so it's a combo for us golf is very simple it is a chance to get out have some fun with our friends that is true we very rarely are out there actually grinding unless you're like dan trying to qualify for something uh we're not really grinders out there we're out there trying to have a good time enjoy ourselves, have a few beverages. You also might be Trent trying to break 90. That's grinding. But for the most part, nobody's actually doing that. Uh, you're out there having a good time, enjoying it, laughing, playing music. All kinds of little things have a way of ruining that. Could be the group in head. You might uh, be upset that they're slow. It might be unbelie- unbelievably hot out. I believe last month was like the hottest month in the history of planet Earth. Uh, fireball. Fireball is going to help you just find yourself out there. You're going to, you're going to, uh, relieve some stress. You're going to enjoy yourself. I think Frankie is the one who said it a few months ago. We were talking about taking shots in general. Uh, taking shots in general isn't always the best, especially late night. You're not quite sure, but it can get the group going, man. It can mm-hmm. absolutely get the group going. It gets the energy up. Fireball, that iconic cinnamon taste. It's really about as good as it gets on the golf course. We were doing a, a lot last week at the Big Cedar Lodge, and it just delivers the fun every single time. Just jump starts the night, the day, the round of golf, whatever you're trying to really turn up. It just gets the people going. You have some people that might be going a little slow, and you need them to get to your level. You bring out the shots. You bring out the nips of fireball. You know everyone's going to have a good time. You know what's happening. Fireball, baby. You know Fireball at this point. It's iconic. You know it. You've seen it. You love it. The Fireball 50 milliliter shooters are the perfect shot for the golf course. Throw a bunch in your bag. They're ready to go whenever you need them. Plus, no shot glass or chaser needed. Just crack it, knock it back. Done. You can just toss those bottles away and get ready for the next one. If you're uh, really feeling like upping the ante on the course this weekend, make sure to grab the new Fireball Birdie Shot Club. It is literally a golf club filled with Fireball nips. Uh, so enjoy yourself. Enjoy Fireball. Make sure you grab the new Fireball Birdie Shot Club. Who's been the player that you've played with so far? You're fa- just your favorite guy to play with. I don't know. It's because you like watching his game. He's a funny dude. If I if I said, who's your favorite guy you've played with on the PGA Tour? Who's your answer? Probably Adam Scott. I, I play with him. I play with at the Byron Nelson, but a lot of practice around. He's been so good to me. Same as Jason Day, just really good guys. And um, I mean, they have Jason as one of the best putting strokes I've ever seen. 
and Adam's got the best swing in golf. So it's you know when 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 it's uh, at the plays actually it was us three and it was yeah it was a pretty good. Um, I was enjoying myself on the sidelines. I was just there. I, think it, I was just I there for the road. I think it was Jason who said they they said something on the on the. I think it was the British Open telecast or the broadcast where I think it was Jason who said he thinks you can be number one in the world, but you have to improve your wedge play. Is that an accurate assessment? Um, not. Yeah. Yes. Obviously, the wedge game's got to be good, but my approach game's absolutely trash right now. So, um, I need to work on that. Not trash, but it's okay. It's improved over a shot in the last three months, let's say. So that's a really big difference i've changed my i changed my um golf ball um i was in a specific callaway ball and then i changed to a different one and the one i used to use and it's made a big difference um when i was when i was saying about bay hill how tough it is i i couldn't stop the ball and i was like holy shit i can't play golf so i ended up changing to a spinnier ball because of bay hill and then when it got kind of windier i for a whole for a whole kind of like eight months i i used a spinnier ball and I was like, why is it spinning so much? So then I went back to the old ball. And since since the PGA, I, I got to the point where I'm like, mate, I am so bad at hitting it into the wind and around the wind. I'm just going to change to this ball. And I came 18th. Uh, I was close to, you know, I think I was top 10 going into the last round or the weekend. So uh, it was a good change. It was a great change. Um, so it's been good so far. How uh, How like acutely aware are you of your stats do you pay attention week in and week out yeah i got a i got a stats guy i mean a lot of guys have a stats guy now um i think it's gotten at a competitive edge where you just need that one percent and half like i mean three quarters of the things you can i mean you can look on the pj tour website and see your stats but you got to really dig deep in it you know every time my caddy inputs it into the app um there's wind like on the on the stats on the pj tour stats it doesn't say like what wind and what it's just a overall um you know where you hit it from but you know there's with the stats guy there's a guy that oh he looks at where it is from from the rough from the fairway from the bunker where you real like pinpoint exactly where you need to get better and um that will save you the shots so i've got like five things right now that i kind of have to do to most improve my approach play or my whole game and um half of them are you know slowly getting better and half of them i need to get better at so like how specific will those things be will it be like all right from the rough and a right to left wind i need to yes. you know so like what is it so there's a obviously a dispersion so let's say you hit 200 shots over the whole year and 15 of them were from the rough and um from 125 yards there's a dispersion pattern where um dispersion pattern so like just a chart with all the dots of where you hit it and the, obviously the ones in the middle are green saying it's a good tick and then some that you've you know hit a flyer and just gone over the back and messed up yourself it's a red dot and that that means you've hit like a bad shot and then you've got a hard chip coming back um so you obviously didn't read that situation properly or did your course management to say you know over the back is not good so um yeah learning from like just pretty much like a a batch of data of your golf shots and that goes from every yardage from zero to driver and even putting so everything pretty much it's interesting i feel like <clears throat> we almost always hear people talk about course management and then i think that everybody kind of equates that to playing more conservative is there any yeah. part of like are, are there results that you get from all the stats study uh, consultation that you just mentioned that tell you you should actually be playing more aggressive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, so there's times where, I mean, if you just play, you don't really know what you're, you know, you're good at a profile, you're good at a profile. You don't know. So specifically, like if it's a right to left wind because I hit a fade, I can actually hit it close because I can hit it up against the wind and it will be a pretty straight shot. But when there's a, when there's like, a left to right win, you know, I, because I hit a fade, like I got to start it so far left, and which means there's probably going to be more dispersion instead of like hitting a draw into it and kind of hitting it straight. So there's times where you have to play conservative, and then there's times go ahead, it's it's a right to left win, go hit a fade and hit it hit it good, um, and you know your 
you're you're pretty good at you're pretty good at that. Go ahead and go. So yeah, it's nice to know what the things you're good at. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, is is it like is it like do you do you then go to the golf course with you know one of these placards of like if a pin is here and the wind is here like a you know a, a system for it or when you're out there with your caddy is it more feeling like all right I like this wind I like where this pin is or do you guys have some math involved? Uh no, it's a bit more feel. It's I, I I'm a pretty feel player. I don't like to get too involved in it. So sometimes it's not week to week. It's you know after a three week break or after a three week tournament um, stretch, then I get my stats and then I can improve from obviously what I need to get better at. Uh, but nah, it's more just it. I don't know. I mean, golf is tough. It's not. It's not always. It's not <laughs> about the good shots you hit. It's about where you miss it and how you control your misses. So. Um, a lot of people overcomplicate it, um, but there's times where a par is actually a good, good shot or, you know, from 125 yards out, the average on the BJ tour is 20, 20 feet. And you think you need to stiff it from 125 yards, but you don't actually, you just have to hit it on the green and hopefully you hold the putt. Yeah. There's a, a you feel like see, that, see it that way. There's been a big shift, right. And that people don't see it that way. And I, you know, you see a lot of the stats guys on golf, Twitter, that are putting that out there being like, I see amateurs that think that aren't breaking 80, aren't breaking 85, 90 that are pissed off when they hit a 125 yard wedge. It's not tight. And it's like, well, the best players in the exactly. world are hitting it tight. Exactly. Right? Very often. So exactly. It's, it's got- just a lot of expectations for amateurs. Really? Like they think they have to hit such, or they want to hit such good shots, but I mean, they don't practice and we practice and we can't even, I mean, I sometimes miss the green from 150 yards in and it's just, it's annoying for me, but I do this for a living. I sh- I should hit it close, but everyone's working a working a job and then going out and playing, you know, socially, and they miss it and they get angry, and it's just like we can't even do it. So why should you get mad? <laughs> I remember Dustin Johnson said that to us one time. He's I just like, ex- I just exposed everyone. Sorry, guys. No, we people love that. We deserve to be exposed. All of us. It's like DJ. We filmed a video <laughs> with DJ like a year and a half ago, and he's. We were like, dude, you never seem to get like pissed off on the course. And he said exactly what you just said. He's like, I, I practice yeah. all the time. I'm one of the best players in the world, and I still miss all the time. So why would I be surprised when I miss? Like it yeah. happens all the time. Um. So when are you when are you exactly. fired it back he's... up again? When are we gonna When are we gonna see you out there? Um, couple weeks. I'm gonna go. Um play uh irish open wentworth and france french open so i got those three on the dp world and then um uh i didn't know i had my card and i don't know if i do have my card still but uh i'm pretty close to that threshold so um i thought i'd throw in another tournament um on the pj tour uh zozo which is a no cut event and i'll get some points from that um wait but is it not a I'd new play. season like how does that work with does it no, count so for- yeah so this year is the first year of not the new it's a new schedule so last year and the year before the fall season was the new new season but now it's not it's they're trying to make it one whole year and then the calendar year is the new year so kind of sucks for me i have to wait until the end of the fall season to actually see if i got my card so um yeah zozo went nice enough to get me a um a, a sponsor's invite and um yeah hopefully i can tear it up there you have your card. You're, you're, you're holding the card. It's just off screen. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, hope, hopefully you're right. <laughs> yeah, but you better be right at this point. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll be, be waiting. We'll be waiting. <laughs> <That'd> be- <laughs> yeah, yeah, it better be because it's, it's not a small deal. <laughs> no, Listen, we'll have him back now, on. Now, now you're shaking like, in your fuck, boots. Like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, he's going to not play another tournament for the whole year because he thought he had his card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about the sponsor's invite. Someone else can have it. And I'll miss out by one <laughs> shot thanks to Dan. And Barstool <laughs> Cheers, man. <laughs> uh, was it a was it a weird year for you with everything going on as a guy who's trying to make it, trying to get your tour card, and then there's just all this high level drama, existential threat. You're trying to just kind of focus on you and your game and and making it, which is a childhood dream. Was it just like a was it kind of a do you feel like one of the weirder kind of young like you know, early years that somebody could have out there. Yeah, I it was it was definitely a very interesting couple of years um, or year. Uh, I, you know, I just I went out there to just have the the mindset of just play golf and just let yeah. let it let golf take care of 
itself and see how it goes. But I, yeah, I didn't really get my head involved or my face involved in all that stuff. I, I just wanted to play golf and I was still on the DP World Tour. So I'm just trying to make it out of the PJ Tour and trying to get my card. And um, I guess it kind of helped. Some people went to the other tour and uh, kind of made it a little easier. Um, they must have wanted my world you. Ranking down. They must have wanted you. You're young. You're Australian. You're exciting. I have to think that there was an offer. Well, I, I'm going to be very honest. I do not know any offer or anything. So my manager is obviously, or not obviously, but might have dealt with it. Um, but I, I don't know anything about live or any offer that I would have got. Um, I was just. I was just trying to make it on the PJ tour. I was trying to trying to make it out to America. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's obviously a lot of a lot of shit going on with you know people going and people not going, and I I understand both ways. Um, if someone gave you a hundred million, you'd probably take it. So um, yes, yeah, it is what it is. Um, can't hate anyone for what they they've done. Uh, I think it's you know it's obviously a big money thing. Uh, and not just, you know, for the game of golf and yeah, it is that as well. But I mean, the money's quite, quite, quite different to where they used to play. And, um, obviously the PJ tour is getting a lot better and a lot cooler. So, uh, we, we love that. <laughs> we do love that. I feel like you're a guy too, that just, you just love golf. Like I, I could understand your management team being like, we're going to let this guy focus and just play golf. We're not going to, we're not going to bog him down with all the other bullshit that's going on. Uh, like, do you play when you're home with your mates or you're, you know, are you playing golf in your free time? Oh yeah. I, I love, um, I love playing, um, just, you know, sometimes practicing on the range can be boring and people that know me, I don't have the longest attention span. So I like to just go out and play. Um, so we have, a we have our football AFL, Australian football league, um, and not, you know, obviously in NFL, um, there's a lot of guys that play golf in my area and my golf course, you know, I'm playing with them tomorrow. Uh, and it's, you know, it's quite nice to just, you know, kick it back and relax and play some music, playing carts and just have fun. Uh, yeah, not many people think you just, you know, bash balls and, you know, you're a professional and you do that all day, but no, nah, sometimes you may get a lot of people get more out of it playing golf than just hitting the range balls. So, um, I think there's a balance, you know, you need to obviously get a little feel and a little technical with the range game and then go out and go play and um, make sure you trust it. But it's, yeah, it's, I love playing golf and just enjoying it with my mates. I love, you know, the social side of it. Um, and, I, and I'm not quite, I'm not a quiet kid, so I like having fun. Yeah, I, uh, that's what you just said is probably the, I, the thing that I think relates to every level of golfer is, being able to do it on the range and then being able to trust it when you're actually out there. That is just the hardest thing on the planet. It, literally, whether you're a 25 handicap or whether you're a top 10 player in the world, it's like we can all kind of get into a point where we're grooving it on the range and we're like, I think I got it. I think I kind of figured out golf. And you go out there, you get a little bit out of sync, yeah. you get a little bit uncomfortable and you're like, what the fuck happened? I don't even know how to use my limbs anymore. Exactly. And that feeling, I, I get half the time too you know it's it's the shittest feeling you're just like why can't you just relax and just hit a golf ball like you're on the range and you're out there and you're like i'm actually stupid like i cannot like what what it like what's this feeling like i feel like the club's gonna the ball's gonna go 30 yards right and yeah i mean a professional golfer saying that and we do that 24 7 uh obviously there's you know mental and there's all that but Sometimes it's just like that. Sometimes you feel so good and then sometimes you feel like you can't even hit the fairway or hit the planet. So it I is what it, it is. Was, uh, it's golf. I think it was Move Nick on. Taylor who this last weekend in Memphis was playing great and then on Sunday he just didn't have it. I think he shanked one and his ball striking was just off and they are talking about it in the coverage and I was like, that that guy gets it. Like that's just, we all have been that, there before. You're just yeah. like, I don't know why. I just cannot hit the ball right one now. One of us, one of us. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. That's right. It's, Oh, it's just, it just happens so quickly. Um, normally when you play good, it just, it's on a string, but sometimes it's, sometimes it's like that. And he, I mean, he had an amazing win, win, win in Canada and that was pretty cool. Incredible. Um, Incredible. nice guy too. Yeah, he was great. We like him. 
Um, that was badass when he made that bomb. Um, poor Tommy. Yeah, that was. was uh, yeah, I love Tommy though. Tommy's um, one of the nicest guys out there, and I don't know how many top how many top fives he had, and uh, twenty two uh, top five finishes. He has twenty two. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. That's so uh, many. That's so that's many so- top five finishes to not have a win. Twenty two. Yeah, I mean that's tough. I mean it's Tommy Fleetwood. He's he's got one of the best swings in the world, and he just he's uh, he's automatic. He literally puts that that little yoga block that and he drill hits he does balls. is crazy it's oh man i would hit that i would hit that shit in one <laughs> one shot um but that's why i'm not a good ball striker you know like he can just do that back to back to back and that's why he contends because he hits it so good and when his putter listens oh we will we'll have to be careful because if that catches on fire the, it's going to be tough to beat <laughs> <laughs> like uh he does hit it so good i uh yeah you guys yeah. are both a couple of the you could be both of the the longer hair guys out there there's not a ton of long hair guys out there i mean i saw um how hot it was in memphis oh my god like you probably want to cut your hair after that week or during the week uh but we got some barbers now and then uh out on tour and um yeah just get a little little fresh fresh fade on the mullet and little trim which is nice that is nice. They kind of provide it just like the like the physio truck. They got a barber right there. Yeah, too. I remember I saw at the U.S. Open they had an official U.S. Open barber walking around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Monty and the boys they they're awesome. They always come out at the U.S. Open every year, and um, I've only played a couple, but yeah, they've been the barbers, and you know I think they fly them out, and that's it, it's, it's it's cool. I mean they they're good with their good with their gear and their and their scissors, and I just yeah, it's it's. Cool. I feel like it's cool to just have must that. Have- I feel like soccer players must have traveling barbers because they all look like oh, they yeah. got a haircut one hour before the game every yeah. single time they play. Yeah. Yeah. The more people I hang out with, like famous people, they get their haircut like they pay like 100, 200 bucks every three weeks. And I'm like, bro, like one hair has just grown. Like, what are you doing? And he's like, no, I've got to stay fresh. I'm like, Brother, you can spend money a different way, but you got to stay fresh. You know, it's your, it's your brand. And maybe one day I'll have to, cut a hair that that's out of place well for 200 bucks it's interesting <laughs> with the soccer guys because they're one of the only sp- sports where they don't have a hat or a helmet on so they're just out there like their hat yeah. their hair is part of their brand all the time whereas you guys rocking hats all the time baseball exactly, players exactly. hats like football and all that they got helmets so i get the soccer guys i get it you got to be protective of that brand for sure um yeah and the, and the club's probably club's probably brought brought someone big like a Must. great barber exactly so you might as well get it if it's there yeah let's say your business was humming but now you are falling behind teams buried in manual work taking forever to close the books getting one source of truth is like pulling teeth if this is you you should know these three numbers thirty six thousand. 25 one 36 thousand that's the number of businesses which have upgraded to netsuite again that's 36 thousand that's the number of business upgraded to netsuite uh, by oracle netsuite is the number one cloud financial system streamlining accounting financial management inventory hr and more 25 netsuite turns 25 this year that's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less close their books in days not weeks and drive down costs and one, because your business is one of a kind. So you get a customized solution for all your KPIs, key performance indicators in one efficient system with one source of truth, manage risk, get reliable forecasts and improve margins. That's something that we've been doing here at Foreplay. We've been trying to improve margins. We're talking about business. Obviously, Dave just bought Barcelona Sports back. We want to be an efficient efficient business. We started just me and Trent, Frankie popping in occasionally, just chit-chatting about golf, not really thinking about anything else. You can get to a point where you're very inefficient. You can get to a point where you're not optimized at all. NetSuite is going to help you do that. It's been enormous for us that we've been able to optimize thing. It changes our business, changes the amount of money that our business is able to make so that Dave doesn't get mad at us and fire us. Um, and NetSuite can help your business dramatically as well. So right now, Download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance absolutely free at netsuite.com slash four. That's netsuite.com slash four to get your own KPI checklist. Again, go visit right now, netsuite.com slash four. (laughs) 
Yeah, I, I liked when we were in Australia how um, I feel like the NBA was way bigger than I thought it was going to be. Like you guys were crazy about the NBA down there. Yeah, I love NBA. It's oh, it's so good. Um, I watch it as much as I can. Um, it's cool. I, I, it's it's on in the mornings when I wake up in Australia, so it's quite nice just to hang out, chill out, have lunch, and then go to golf. Uh, but it's yeah, I, I, I love basketball. I, I went to a few games in America, and just so good. So fun. All right, man. Well, we appreciate it, man. This was a good time. I uh we're um we're big fans. I think watching you play, I think there's there's certain players, a lot of players that are generally they're boring to watch. Like like if they just cut to <laughs> Patrick Cantley or something, it's like you just pull out your phone, you scroll through Twitter. It's, it's always Cantley it's rigs. Boring. It's all you always use Cantley for that boring example. As it gets. And I think that when they cut to you, it's like you kind of lean forward. You're like, all right, what's this fucking guy gonna do here? Like it's just exciting to watch. So uh so I, that's awesome that's great for the game we're huge golf nuts so watching you play is very very fun we appreciate the time and we'll have to we'll have to get some videos going i i appreciate that you've watched a for couple sure. and we could do some fun shit with you for sure oh yeah that would be fun um when i'm in america that'll be about 10 times easier so um let's yeah, do it pull my It'll leg i have to go to vegas i'll do it if you force me <laughs> <laughs> oh vegas oh no which casino are we hitting up what when <laughs> i did my bachelor party at the win it was it was everything was it a win? That you would expect it to be oh, hey, hey what a beautiful a beautiful nice, place nice the win's uh, a win i'm <laughs> that's right <laughs> i'm a i'm more of an aria guy i think the aria is, oh fancy new well the i mean yeah. the restaurants in there oh man it's yeah. just it's really really good everything's right there it's accessible I'd be- I've been there five times and I do not know where anything is. Like we go to, <laughs> we go to Yellowtail and I'm like, okay, what casino is that, that at? And then he's like this. And then the next day, next couple of days we went there and I'm like, okay, we're it's massive. It's too big. I have to, I have to write in my notes where each restaurant is and it'll be, I'll have to piggyback off, um, Kurt the whole time because he, he just knows everything there. Yeah. Kurt and Lipsky, to you gotta there. be careful. I mean, there's some, they get after it. Oh, I know. I know. I've I've done a few few sessions with the boys. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, like I know. Mm-hmm. I've done the after it part with them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. I've heard I've heard stories, but we haven't done anything crazy. But I know there's uh, a couple stories there that might not want to get out. Lipsy, I, Lipsy's like I feel like low key kind of the ringleader in that in that Vegas mafia. Yeah, he's. I think he's one of the older boys uh, compared to the group and knows knows the ins and outs and knows pretty much everyone there so um it's nice but nice nice person to know <laughs> and kurt yeah kurt, kurt knows a lot too yeah you gotta and if you're gonna be in the you gotta have at least one guy in the group who knows who just knows the scene yeah. who knows where places are at how to get from spot to spot otherwise you'll just waste so much time you'll get be frustrated so you gotta have a guy exactly exactly and there's so much to do oh there's so a lot much to do, do in vegas the food is actually been to a couple concerts or Foods, I gotta, I gotta see that new sphere. I don't know what that is. What is that, dude? You gotta go look on social. You'll, I'm sure you've seen stuff and just didn't even realize it. But they, they built this new like two billion dollar sphere. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I've see seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's massive. Oh, that's unreal. That's scary. Like they have the eyeball. Oh, yep. you'll shit yourself if you just like saw that. But <laughs> Dan's on mute again. You're muted, Dan. <laughs> Dan, you're muted. <laughs> you're on mute, Dan. What did you say? I got Alex Bush telling me that I'm echoey, so I fucking put myself on mute every time I stop speaking. What I was saying <laughs> yeah, was it's right are, behind the wind golf course. <laughs> it's right yeah. behind the wind golf course, and you're hitting balls directly into an eyeball, and it's very off-putting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, though. It looks They sick. should do, like, they can change it to anything. I mean, the F1 there, that would be unreal. I don't know if the sphere is close to that, but. Oh, it'll be uh, it'll be. Crazy. I think I'm going to that. I think that's going to be my first F1 experience. Yeah, uh, I've never seen an F1 experience, but yeah, I'll be pretty sick. Um, I'll be jealous. I'm pretty jacked up for that. But yeah, I saw. I'd love to go. Yeah, the other day, I saw that thing was like a huge bat. It was just a huge basketball, the sphere, and it just, it just looked. It literally could not have looked more like it was just an actual basketball. It's like holy shit. Um, so funny. Awesome. They can change it to anything, which is cool. Yeah. That thing is sweet. All right, man. 
Well, um, we appreciate it. We appreciate you taking an hour out of your time. I know it's a, a little bit of a stretch off. You're kind of hanging, chilling, regrouping. But like I said, we love watching you play, and we'll uh, we'll do a lot more together. It'll be a good time. For sure, for sure. Thanks, guys. Appreciate me. Appreciate you guys having me. Absolutely. See ya. See ya.